Man, this whole saving the universe thing makes a man hungry. Somebody best be in here making my cake. And it better be you, Luma. Hello, everyone. I am Third Mario Brother, and welcome back to Super Mario Galaxy. Last time, we finished up pretty much everything that we can do in the fountain right now. And this time, we are exploring the new dome that we unlocked in the last episode, which is the kitchen. So let's get started with its first main galaxy, which will be... Ah, oh, such a nice and beautiful, relaxing-looking one, the Beach Bowl Galaxy, and our first true water level of the game, so let's get started with it. <laughs> and there were, like, seagulls frozen in the air there for a second. That was kind of cool in the, uh, overworld there, but anyway, we have the sunken treasure, so let's go plunder that booty. Ah, oh, man, and this seriously looks like such a nice place. Even though it's like the middle of summer right now and it's like 500 degrees out, I have not swam a single time, man. It's so disappointing, but hello. How are you doing today? <laughs> I love the way these penguins look. They're so derpy, but so adorable. Yeah, this beach bowl is pretty much penguin paradise. Welcome to beach bowl. And we are invading the penguin territory. Perhaps we can become their penguin master or something if we put on a suit. But anyway, you can grab on the vine and Mario of the jungle is here. You can collect these star bits normally. And this is uh, pretty much the only time you're going to be using this mechanic in the whole game. So it's kind of pointless. But you know what? It's fun anyway. Yep, yep, yep. I just did that, everybody. Why are you not applauding? Clap your little flippers for me. See the sparkly things? So, candy chunks, huh? Or star bit chunks, or picture words chunks. The students are distracted by the sparklies. <laughs> That's so adorable how they call them sparklies. But anyway, the name of the mission is Sunken Treasure, and you might then be able to assume that you can uh, find the treasure in the sunken region that is underwater. And what I like about swimming in this game is that you can spin over and over and go super, super fast that way. And when you're playing as Mario, uh, not to hint that there's any other character that you can play as in this game, but when you're playing as Mario, you can spin repeatedly and not have to worry about losing air or anything like that. And you can just go super fast, and it makes swimming come. Uh, significantly less painful than it would be normally unless you're dumb like me and not paying attention to where you're going and swim directly into an enemy because that is just how I roll yo but hey clam open up or else I'm gonna uh, scrape your tongue right out of you and eat you mm, seafood but let's not get ourselves hungry right now we are searching for the star chips or the sparklies as the penguins like to call them and honestly I believe there's one in this crate, yes, and there's one right over here. Honestly, swimming in Mario Galaxy isn't that bad, because not only do you have spinning, but also, if you press the C button, you can center the camera behind you, and that obviates so many of the problems that a lot of 3D games have with swimming. A lot of the time, the camera gets all confused, and it's just really, really a pain to control, but in Mario Galaxy, things are super easy, so Mario is a natural swimmer, man. Ever since those days in Super Mario 64 where he would drown violently, he has learned. Swim through bubbles to get a gulp of air, and there isn't even horrible, horrible, terrifying drowning music. And I mentioned, um, in the previous episode, or maybe the one before, that the prankster comment music is, like, some of the most stressful music in video games, but it still doesn't beat the Sonic drowning music, as many of you pointed out. So, thank you for that. I have to give credit where credit is due. Anyway... Just wanted to show off that song real quick, and does it remind anybody else of being godlike underwater, throwing fireballs everywhere? But, uh, yeah, we're going to be encountering several of those throughout the game. I'm not sure how many exactly, but I don't know. I always thought it was just a really cool way to throw in one-ups and stuff. Throw it back to the old days, get some nostalgia in there, all that good kind of stuff. And if we could backflip up here, someday that would be nice. You can't actually- Oh, no! <laughs> Barely didn't make it, but at least we're still over the button. 
I suppose the game uh, wants you to go over there and like walk up the staircase, but man, I'm Super Mario. I don't got time for that. And wow, this is a really pretty view. This is such a nice place, man. I want to be here. Anyway, use wall jumps to get way up high, and that is perfect advice because we're going to have to do exactly that just now. And I guess this is the game's way of like introducing you to wall jumps because I don't think we've explicitly had to use them too much before, but we're going to smack this crystal right... I said smack this crystal right in the face and get ourselves our star. And I suppose the game thinks that star chips are more important than this star because the mission was called Sunken Treasure and only the star chips were in the water, but the star itself is up here. Either way, the star means more in my heart. So let's grab it and finish up the first mission of the Beach Bowl Galaxy. So, mission number two here with the Beach Bowl is going to be passing the swim test. Oh no, that sounds daunting and terrible. Whatever shall we do? And this mission and the first one here are really, really innocuous and non-threatening, and there's like absolutely no way to die aside it from drowning, I suppose, but really that's not that big of a threat either. Now taking applications for the Beach Bowl Swim School's final swim test. Sign up for the final swim test here. Okay, you guys can't even sign documents, man. You probably can't sign all the legal stuff needed to take a swim test, so I am the only one who can truly pass it. You're here to take the swimming school's final swim test? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? In this test, you must collect shells in the ocean. If you bring me the gold shell, it's an automatic A for you. Wow, that sounds ridiculous and... <laughs> oh my god, look at that animation. Hold up. Every time you bounce on him, he's gonna get angry, but spin into him or shoot a star bait and... Mm, you wanna go, punk? That's the face he's giving me right now. But it's kind of funny, um, short little story about swimming while we finish up this incredibly easy mission. When I was little, I was taking, like, swimming lessons or something, right? I might, I must have been, like, 10 years old or something like that, but I got to skip a couple of them because it was evident that I already knew how to, like, hold my breath underwater and do the, all the other basic stuff. Also, if you hold Z, you get brake lights on your shell. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Just stole it out of that kid's hands, but, um, yeah, I got to skip a couple lessons, but I was in the final, uh... Uh, final lesson, I suppose, of these swim lessons, and I was supposed to swim, like, 20 or 25 laps the length of the pool or something like that, and I was swimming with all these kids who were, like, three or four years older than me, and they finished, like, five minutes before I did, and I was sitting there going, <sighs> doing every kind of stroke there is in the world, and it was so ridiculous, and I felt so stupid, but five minutes later, I passed my swim test, I stole that golden shell from all those other innocent students who worked hard to find it, and I got myself, I didn't think you'd actually be able to bring it back. Here's a big gold medal for you. I got myself my star. And yeah, we just stole this shell out of these kids' hands. Don't we feel good about ourselves, man? Yes, stealing from children. Truly, Mario Galaxy is teaching us the best lessons. Nice job on the test, but are you even one of my students? Uh, uh, yeah, about that. You see, uh, goodbye. Uh, yeah, distract him with that golden shell that we stole from his students so that we can grab our star. And the final regular mission of the Beach Bowl Galaxy is the Secret Undersea Cavern. And finally, we have something exciting and dangerous, just like a plumber likes. The only caveat to this is, it doesn't even really take place inside this beach bowl here, which the galaxy is named after. What do you have to say, Mr. Intro Penguin? No swim class today! Oh, <laughs> we may as well go explore ancient secrets that could possibly kill us all then. And, uh, what does the instructor have to say? I really like all the characters in Super Mario Galaxy. They're really simple and not distracting, but they've got personality too. Don't hit the wall on the ocean floor with a shell. It would break, and... Uh, don't break the wall with a shell, okay? I'm serious. Well... You know what? I already graduated your class. I don't have to listen to you anymore, man. You ain't my dad. You ain't my mama. In fact, if you were either of those things, that would be extremely weird because you're a male penguin. But either way, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, there are treasure chests around here, I believe. In fact, there's a treasure chest right here in front of the wall that we're definitely not going to break that I believe contains a 1-up. So why not show that off, grab it real quick, and grab ourselves yet another shell so that we can vandalize the world here. And yes, once again, 
press the C button after breaking, and it's so easy to control these things. I love it so much. But uh, we should probably grab ourselves some air, because on the way up here, I can't remember how long this passageway is. Whoa! A cave! Man, this penguin is just so easily amazed. But uh, let's go ahead and go up here, and we come to the secret undersea cavern, which is a heck of a lot less spacious than I thought it would be. Man, who set up these torches in here, and how are they still burning? This is some Zelda logic right here, but kill that bat. Kill that Goomba, and we can continue on with the mission, which takes place by this cork over here. So, uh, ugh, the boxes are in the way, and wow, those things on the cage right there look really creepy. They look like eyeballs or something like that, but either way, ground pound this cork that's apparently keeping the entire beach bowl together, but who cares, because we've got a launch star to hop into, and... Like I said, this mission doesn't have very much at all to do with the beach bowl because you just come... Oh, oh my gosh. I almost missed the very first jump on this. Are you kidding me? But, uh, yeah, you just come over here and you really don't have to worry about the beach bowl any longer in the entirety of your life unless you get sucked into the black hole, which is definitely going to murder us. Well, that really is too bad. But at the very least, it's going to spawn us uh, once again back here. And there are one-ups all over this thing, by which I mean there are like two one-ups or something like that. But you know what? Two one-ups is better than zero one-ups. So you can keep on giving this thing a bunch of tries over and over, and it won't be that big of a deal. And I was trying to take a shortcut right off the bat there, but evidently my jumping skills are just a little bit shabby right now. So I'll have to work on those. And whoa, 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 game. Whoa, chill out, my friend. So we've got these big dudes rolling around the planet, and I suppose I'll follow this guy just so that I don't end up getting crushed by him on the other side. Make sure you do not get smashed by these things, because that is instantaneous death. Doesn't matter if you've got a full health bar, doesn't matter if you say pretty, pretty please, the game will not allow you to live. And man, these things are actually really, really weird. They've got like two mouths, dude. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know if they're actually, it's implied that these things are alive or not, but they're moving around, so I suppose they are, and they've got like two sets of teeth on every single side. Ugh, that is weird. These monsters, man. These monsters. Jump over here, make sure you're not too hasty, but every time they come to one of these platforms where otherwise they would fall off the edge, or at least they come to the end of their route, they will jump straight up and down once again, giving you an opportunity to plan the rest of your route. We have another crystal here that we can just punch in the face with our gigantic plumber fists that apparently get bigger every single time we spin in a circle and grab ourselves our star. But the Beach Bowl Galaxy is not over quite yet. A fast foe comet is in orbit. Yet another new comet type. We are just discovering these things left and right. We should be astronomers or something. But we've got a fast foe comet in orbit, and that is going to make all the enemies in the level move quite a bit faster. So you can assume which mission we're going to be replaying. Fast foes on the Cyclone Stone, which actually sounds kind of a lot cooler than the secret of the undersea cavern, but whatever. So, fast foes on the Cyclone Stone. You guys saw how, um... In the, uh, well, last time I attempted this level, I tried to take that shortcut right off the bat, and rushing was once again the bane of my existence. Well, you can kind of assume that that is the exact same thing here, but that effect is exacerbated, because if you rush, you are going to get caught by one of these things. I am sorry, it is going to happen. Look how quickly they're moving this time around. You have to be quick on your feet, and you have to make sure you're taking things nice and easy so you don't get messed up, because not only are the enemies moving faster, but the entire cyclone stone and all the stones on it are moving faster. So, be very careful about that. And if you're not careful right here, and you don't do, like, long jumps to speed yourself up, you'll get crushed by that other guy who's just going around in circles. And man, what a boring life that must be. He's just stuck here on this stone in the sky above a beautiful beach that he should or could be swimming at. But instead, he's here going in circles for all of eternity. Truly, this is a poetic statement. Now, you can time yourself up there reasonably well, and you won't have to worry too much about falling, because those things have actually a really, really long time that you can stand on them. See, like, right here. You can stand on this until it's like, oh, oh my god, never mind, I spoke too soon. I thought it got smaller until it was like one pixel, but apparently I just got a little bit cocky. Wow, seriously? 
Really? <laughs> Enough of that shortcut then. Okay, back here once again. So, you do have a reasonable amount of time to stand on these things. You can stand on them until they go poof, but once they go poof, it is all over. You get no warning, you get no sort of, like, uh, pity frame or two to jump off of them. Nope, you are falling into that black hole, my friend, but... It's the exact same level as before, but everything is moving more quickly, so you just have to keep in mind where the enemies are going to go, be a little bit patient, plan your moves out carefully, but be quick on your feet simultaneously. And there we go, we've defeated the first Fast Foe Comet, and with that, we've got only one thing left to do here in the Beach Bowl Galaxy, so why not take it on right now, and that will be... A secret mission, which are actually really, really fun to, like, explore and discover, and apparently we've already opened up every single possible galaxy in the kitchen, and we've just started it. How's that for progress? But, back to the Beach Bowl galaxy it is, and we are going to take on the secret. And the secret mission here is going to be located inside the secret undersea cavern. So we've got a secret within a secret. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do right now. You guys already saw the opening to this level, so we can just get right into it, I suppose. The secret of the undersea cavern. First and foremost, I'm going to show a secret within a secret before I show the other secret within a secret. So the secret takes precedence over the secret within a secret. I kind of wanted to show this off earlier, suppose it doesn't matter when, but in this mission, we've got ourselves a warp pipe in the middle of the water here. Jump into it, and we find ourselves in a very... Oh, that's kind of a cool effect. Is it implying that we're, like, still underwater? Man, the screen is, like, blurring and stuff. That is... That is cool. That is cool. That is a nice piece of detail that I very much like, and I'm not sure... Yes, we can make it up here. If you grab this question mark block, all the enemies, by which I mean the one Goomba in here, and all the brick blocks... Oh, the Goomba didn't actually turn. I thought he turned into Starbits. Man, you tricked me. Let me turn you into Starbits, just so I was right all along. But, um... Yeah, you get a bunch of star bits through doing that. 65 right off the bat, and we've barely spent any time whatsoever in here. Also, I kind of wanted to uh, show off something else about this game that not a lot of people know about. Alright, apologies for that little cut there, but there's something about this game that not a whole lot of people know about. If you get right up to the ledge of water, go ahead and press the A button. And Mario does a perfect 10 out of 10 dive. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. But yeah, I never really discovered that until extremely recently. So it's a really, really nice little detail that's just in there to show uh, the polish of this game. For now, we're going to want to grab this Koopa shell and come over here to this sort of walled off. Well, not walled off, but lesser known area of the beach. But come on, man. Mario, you gotta get up. You gotta get out of the water. You could dolphin dive onto that ledge. I'm sure it's possible. But apparently, I don't have the skills for it. So we're just gonna jump up right here and come over to this chest hidden in the corner. What are you doing here, little buddy? Let's smack it with the Koopa shell and find out. Apparently, there's a launch star in it. And once again, we are propelled far, far, far from the Beach Bowl galaxy. But honestly, this is probably the most fun mission that this galaxy has. Can I make it up there? Oh, yes, you can! Apparently, with the triple jump, even if you're just using a small jump in Mario, you can grab the Ice Flower, which turns us into Ice Mario, which is a really cool power-up. First of all, he looks really cool. Pun definitely intended. And you can skate if you spin the Wii Remote. And if you hold Z... He'll go backwards and you can skate backwards and you can pirouette and do all that kind of stuff. It is such an awesome power-up, man. <laughs> I love it so much. But anyway, we can be done showing it off for the moment and uh, instead use its powers in the way that are in the way that is intended here. Blech. You can jump on waterfalls. As you saw, we were skating on that water and freezing it simultaneously. But you can also jump on waterfalls so you can wall jump off it. And he kind of sticks to each little bit of ice, like, kind of in a, kind of a Spider-Man-esque way. So, it's really, really a cool power-up, honestly. Let's just keep jumping up these waterfalls, hop into this sling star, and basically what we're doing here is climbing the world. What's over here? Is there, like, a secret or something? Nah, probably just more star bits. Oh, we get a really nice view of the area, I suppose. Either way, we probably shouldn't be wasting our ice flower power-up. 
even though there's one right here, because if you run out of it, even when you're this close to the top, you unfortunately run out of it for good. Here we have a Cataquack. Oh, yes. Super Mario Sunshine 4 confirmed, everybody. But if you lead this Cataquack... Oh, apparently he already died. Cataquacks are not the smartest creatures, if you haven't gathered that already. Uh, you've got to lead this Cataquack over there so that you can hit the star in the sky. I believe it's just barely too high for you to get with a triple jump. I could be wrong, but I'm not going to try it. I'm going to do the mission the intended way. As long as you walk a straight line and make sure that one of those big old icy glacier things doesn't get in your way, you can get your star very easily and get some great use out of the first ice flower of the game. And with that, we have done pretty much everything there is to do in the Beach Bowl galaxy at the moment, including the Prankster Comet and the Secret Star, but I believe there is another Prankster Comet floating around outside in some other level, so why not take it on right now and get that out of the way for the future? I think it's in some, uh, terrace level, so let's go check the big old map that Rosalina has so kindly provided for us and continue onward. Bounce off that guy's head. I love doing that, having just like a long jump combo by accident. I swear I saw one in the terrace here earlier. Well, if you talk to this guy and there are no comets on the field and there is one that you could possibly have, I believe he will, um, he will make it appear for you. So pay him 20 tasty star bits and he will conduct his magic or whatever. Now this guy, he is in a bit more of a star bit dirt than all the other ones. He's only got these weird star things that twirl around, not star bits on the end of his sticks right there. Snackity, snackaday, snackadiddledoo! And with that, he puffs away, and yes, there it is, the blue comet has returned to the terrace. So, that is exactly what I wanted, my friend. Thank you very much. In fact, you can have a one star bit tip for that one. Wow, it went straight through him. Did you guys see that? Uh, but anyway, uh, let's head to the terrace. I don't know what I'm doing. I was walking towards Rosalina. I just can't help myself, man. But here in the terrace, we're going to find that blue comet, which is on which galaxy? I actually have no idea, and my pointer is going crazy right now. Oh, the Honey Hive Galaxy. We've got a Cosmic Comet in orbit. This, my friends, is going to be fun. The Cosmic Comet introduced something that is now... Uh, I was going to say a staple of the Mario series, but it has been reused in the Mario series at the very least. Cosmic Comet is in orbit, and we are going to take on the Honey Hive Cosmic Mario Race. This comet is quite unique from anything that we've taken on so far. Everything looks remarkably similar right now, right? Z to crouch, crouch and press A to do a backward somersault. These guys are giving us tips on how to move quickly. And that is because... Oh, God. We have got a cosmic Mario on our hands. This Mario is made of dark matter, the essence of space itself. And you can actually get a boost right off the bat. I've never actually done that before until just now. But you can get a boost right off the bat by crouching and pressing A as soon as the race starts. But backflip right here and we can continue onward. Basically, this Cosmic Mario is going to be racing us to the star at the end of this level. And it's a shorter version than the normal level. All we have to do is go down this slide and make it to the end of this long section right here. Um, if you run into him, I believe he'll knock you back or do damage or something like that. I don't know. This first one is pretty easy. Easy, but he goes on a predetermined, uh, already set, almost flawless path. It's not especially quick, but uh, if he reaches the star before you, you lose and you will lose a life. Luckily, however, we got to it first because we are the real OG, we are the true Mario, and we have beaten this dark matter made fool. And with that, that is going to do it for this episode of Super Mario Galaxy. So thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time where we move on to the second main galaxy in the kitchen. By the way, we unlocked Rosalina's storybook between one of the stars in this episode, which means that we can head to the library library, which is right outside the kitchen. It's on the same, like, part of the Comet Observatory, and we can read that, but I will be saving that all for a later date. So, once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time when we take on the next galaxy of the kitchen. See you guys then!